uh, in this video i will explain you flexibility coefficient flexibility coefficient are extensively used in the force method if you want to analyze indeterminate structure whether continuous beam whether a rigid jointed frame uh, we are required to find the flexibility coefficient in when we are analyzing the structure by force method now see we will understand what is the meaning of flexibility and flexibility coefficient okay flexibility means this flexibility means uh, it is the displacement cost due to unit load okay displacement either it will be a deflection or it will it will be a rotation and these are cost due to unit load or unit movement so in this in this uh, section we will only understand what is the meaning of flexibility coefficient for that i have taken a structure and two coordinates i am defining two coordinates coordinate i and coordinate j coordinate i represent a force component or deflection component and coordinate j represent a moment component or a rotation component okay so we will understand uh, this <clears throat> first we need to apply a unit load at at the coordinate one at the coordinate defined and no other load on the structure so one by one, by one we need to apply the load so i will apply unit load at coordinate i okay with no other load on the structure so when when i am applying unit load at coordinate i Uh, this will be the displaced position of the structure this could be the possible displacement of the structure and here you can see uh, we are getting the deflection okay at coordinate i and uh, here we are getting the rotation okay so i will i will define this f i i this part represent deflection and this part represent force okay so i am applying unit load at coordinate i and i am finding the deflection at coordinate i so it is represent uh, represented by f i i D uh, displacement at i due to unit load at i okay similarly we can understand this f j i fgi means you see displacement we are we are finding the rotation we are finding the displacement at coordinate j it is due to the unit load at coordinate i okay so when we have done with the uh, calculation of the displacement at different coordinate for this particular load you are required to apply the unit moment this this represent the moment component so we don't have to apply unit load we we need to apply unit moment Uh, so apply unit moment at coordinate j uh, again the the structure will will displaced this could be the possible displacement of the structure <coughs> okay you see here you are applying unit load at coordinate j unit moment at coordinate j sometimes uh, moment is also called as load okay so here the deflection will be f i j you are finding the displacement or deflection at i it is due to the unit load at coordinate j okay and here the rotation is called as fjj fjj means <coughs> again you see you are finding the deflection or rotation at coordinate j it is due to the unit load at coordinate j fjj you see when two coordinates are given so we are writing flexibility coefficient like this f11 f12 f21 f22 and we are required to write down the flexibility matrix so this could be this matrix could be 2 by 2 it will be like this f11 f21 f12 f22 okay so, so the formula of f11 is integration of m1 square divided by ei dx so we will understand how this formula is coming <clears throat> uh, for this i will take uh, a simply supported beam j 
just a simply supported theme and this is one coordinate only one coordinate and I will apply unit load at this coordinate okay and you will get the deformation of the structure and this deflection will be F11 because I am applying the unit load at, at a particular coordinate and, and, and I am finding the deflection at that particular coordinate so it could be the deflection could be F11 it is the def deflection caused due to unit load okay and you can draw the bending moment diagram this will be positive because it is sagging and this is M1 the bending moment due to unit load is represented by M1 if I divide the bending moment diagram the bending moment by EI so you will be getting the curvature ok so we know that the external work done external work done force into displacement is equal to internal work done so internal force internal force into internal displacement so internal displacement is taken as curvature curvature is the internal displacement the curve of the structure ok so F11 equal to M1 and this this phi is equal to m1 by er so f11 equal to m1 square by er and this bending moment diagram is not constant it is varying from section to section so when it is varying then you, you need to integrate between the limit so this is the formula of f11 Okay, the formula for F12 which is also equal to F21 so this is M1 into M2 divided by ER dx so M1 is bending moment developed due to unit load at coordinate 1 if you have two coordinates so we need to apply unit load uh, at the different coordinates so M1 is developed due to unit load at coordinate 1 and M2 is developed due to it is a bending moment due to unit load at coordinate 2 okay. so F22 is equal to M2 square by ER dx okay similarly you can develop for F33 if you have three coordinates F31 uh, which is equal to M1 into M3 divided by ER dx F1 it is also equal to F13 uh, F23 M2 into M3 divided by EI F32 same formula <coughs> so in this way can develop the formula we have seen the derivation of uh, F11 similarly you can derive uh, the formula of F12 F21 F22 F31 whatever okay thank you for watching this video Thank you very much.